Okay, the video free on regulation of any exit metabolism. As I said, uh, we have three videos in a row to explain a model control of metabolism. The first video, we focus on sugar or glucose, and then we also focus on insulin. The second video, we focus on uh, glucagon and uh, diabetes mellitus. And then the third video, we focus on regulation of fatty acid metabolism. Now, uh, to give you a larger picture of not just sugar, but also fatty acid. At the end of the second video, we also mentioned that cardiovascular diseases uh, could be highly related to diabetes patients uh, because of the sugar metabolism is, uh, uh, is uh, hampered or is affected. So that would also affect the fatty acid uh, metabolism. So let's have a look of regulation of fatty acid metabolism. Now we know that uh, sugars, uh, you know, carbohydrates, so six carbon sugar. We end up metabolizing this uh, by glycolysis, turning turning the six carbon uh, sugar into three carbon. Uh, uh, pyruvate and then the pyruvate would uh, bring about the forming this uh, fatty acids. Uh, this is tightly regulated at multiple levels, and animals have uh, different energy requirements. So we need to control those extra sugar. Remember, one of the functions of insulin is for lipogenesis, is to store the sugar into what? Fatty acid. And then we have a tissue for this uh, storage, it's called adipocyte. This is a major tissue for the hydrolysis of triacylglycerol by an enzyme known as lipase. So the lipase would be used to degrade lipid, okay? And then controlled by several hormones such as glucagon, insulin, epinephrine, and also growth hormone. Um, Next week we'll talk about growth hormone, but today we'll touch up on a few things relating to growth hormone. Fatty acid metabolism within tissues are usually controlled by the hormones at different control points. So we have uh, acetyl CoA, carboxylase, lalonic CoA, permatyl CoA, a carnitine, uh, AC, AC transferase one, to control the production and release of energy. So uh, to sum up lipid metabolism, we have this uh, uh, neutral facts uh, try gastrolytes. And then uh, gastro will form this pathway for glycolysis moving into uh, a TC cycle. And then we have uh, fatty acids after beta oxidation forming acetyl CoA also going into TC cycle. That is to produce uh, energy, right? We need the TC cycle to produce ATP energy. And then on the right hand side is for the acetyl CoA bring in uh, forming uh, fatty acid. So uh, gastroaldehyde free force will even form a uh, gastro. This would uh, come together to form triglycerides. So triglyceride is formed and stored in adipose tissues. <clears throat> so these are the basic uh, uh, metabolism and their relationship. So it's this step here is known as the lipogenesis because we want to generate more lipid. So insulin would produce this, it is called lipolysis, to degrade this uh, triglycerides and then bring about forming into T C cycle to produce ATP energy. This is a more complicated picture, so we don't have time to redraw this relationship that we have the adipose tissues, the liver and the muscle. Now don't forget in our body. We have a thigh and leg and also arm and then large part of the body is muscle. So this is also a very important organ. Uh, let's take a look what's going on in uh, animal tissue. As said, it's for fat storage. So glucose would be uh, stored in the form of acetyl CoA, alonic CoA, and then go into storing an acyl CoA or pemmatin. And then at the same time, after beta oxidation or uh, triglyceride, we have this uh, lipolysis, and then the fatty acids would move on, and then we move into the muscle, acyl CoA, and then uh, that the muscle need this for what? T cell cycle to produce energy, and also muscle 
would suck up a lot of glucose. The glucose are from the diet and then from the blood going into the muscle and then turn that into uh, energy. Okay. So therefore, one of the most important steps to absorb your glucose from the blood is what? Doing exercise. Okay. By doing exercise, a lot of a huge amount of glucose will be sucked in and then uh, turn into energy. Okay. But then the liver also plays an important role. And then because in the liver we produce triglyceride and then into very low density lipoprotein. We have the L that we bring into the adipose tissue through the circulation. But at the same time here, uh, we, the main point is at the uh, mitochondria because the mitochondria is for uh, beta oxidation. I mean, of course, same thing is true for these other organs. But now we uh, expanded a little bit, uh, uh, beta oxidation here, and again that would produce acetyl A for the TC cycle for ATP production. And then uh, here we have the membrane uh, transferring these different materials for the fatty acid uh, beta oxidation. And then we have uh, fatty acid synthase forming uh, palmitase and that would bring in the uh, acyl CoA. So all the fat or fat uptake and then fat uptake in the liver. This is of course a more complicated step involving those uh, LDL uh, receptor. Anyway, to make a long story short, we have the fatty acid facility inside here. So if we need to store them, we have to store them in adipose. If we don't store them, we have to use them by beta oxidation, producing this ATP energy. Okay, so this is uh, a picture linking the three tissues: adipose, muscles, and liver. Hormonal control of fatty acid metabolism in mammals. Many of the studies been done in other mammals, including humans. We have glucagon. Glucagon inhibit the uh, acetyl-CoA carboxylase. So cellular myelonic CoA levels withdraw and then fatty acid synthesis stop. So glucagon is again counteracting the effects of insulin, including lipid formation. So myelonic CoA drop. This actually this myelonic CoA inhibit a uh, carnitine uh, acyl transferase one. So fatty acids may later enter into the mitochondria and then be created to produce energy. Uh, with that, the effects of insulin is opposite to glucagon and epinephrine. High blood glucose promotes secretion of insulin and thus promotes a lipogenesis. So we have uh, insulin promoting fatty acid uh, synthesis. By stimulating the phosphorylation of acetyl-CoA carboxylase, but can inhibit psychic AMP mediated activation of protein kinase and stop lipolysis. Lipolysis is the digestion of lipid. Insulin also promotes synthesis of the enzyme involved in lipogenesis, such as acetyl-CoA carboxylase and fatty acid synthase. So when nutrients are enough, in this case, I would urge you to again go back to the slide before and then add onto the hormone and where do they add on. Starvation would inhibit synthesis of acetyl-CoA carboxylase and fatty acid synthase. But low fat diets increase synthesis of these enzymes. So this enzyme, uh, 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 you know, low fat diets. So sometimes it's uh, difficult to appreciate all this complicated uh, metabolism pathway or metabolic pathway. Then, then we, what we need to do is to focus on this uh, summary slides here. The hormones are from the adipose tissues. And one interesting thing is that after we have studied for a few decades, we try to identify how come they are obese persons. So from genetic models of obese um, mice, they found that there's a very important uh, factor known as uh, leptin. Uh, 
actually the obese mice, uh, they do have leptin, just that they have the leptin receptor mutated. So and then they trace back, oh, this one is leptin. Oh, leptin is actually from edible sites. Uh, the edible sites actually produce uh, several things. Glucose would bring in through group 4 and in uh, forming TG or triacetyl gastrol in the edible tissue. But the edible tissue, at the same time, they will store the uh, uh, sugar in the format as fatty acids and uh, fat. And then they would also release uh, adiponectin, leptin, and a hormone called resistin. This regulated at the pokine secretion in obesity, leading to this uh, adiponectin decrease, increase of leptin, and increase of resistin, and the free fatty acids would increase. And we cause that would cause systemic insulin resistance with more fatty acids in the blood. So in addition to insulin and glucagon from the pancreas and leptin, and at adiponectin or adiponectin from the adipose tissues are also clear player in regulating lipid metabolism. Leptin from adipocytes will act on the brain. So we go to the brain to inhibit food intake and increase energy expenditure. Adipose tissues, you may call this an endocrine organ. And then uh, from uh, the policies, we may uh, uh, turn this uh, lipid storage or store the lipid to produce uh, energy. So, edible cytokines and resistance. One of these, uh, we just mentioned the free, uh, the, the uh, adipo tissue will produce this uh, free hormone, uh, adiponectin, resistine, and leptin. Leptin is uh, 167 amino acids from adipo tissue to depress food intake and cause an anti-obesity effect. It will go to the brain, but why leptin cannot be used as uh, for anti-obesity treatment? Mainly because the obese patient, they have OB resistant or receptor problem. So you cannot just use leptin to treat the patients. So controlling obesity would be a very difficult task. Another hormone, uh, uh, adiponectin, reverse insulin resistance, whereas resistin produced mainly from the liver as well, would induce hepatic insulin resistance. Okay? Uh, more research in this area are undergoing and you are urged to uh, have uh, more discussion and understanding of this larger picture. So in the intestine, the fat or triacylgestrol would go into uh, 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 Access adding gastro forming this TG and then we go into the muscle. We use uh, fatty acid to produce energy. Edible tissues would also uh, produce this uh, fatty acid for the muscles because this is the storage of uh, edible tissue from triacyl gastro. We have lipase to produce fatty acids and this will send a leptin and also add ad 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 uh, ad ad into the brain. And then into the brain, the brain would also control the pancreas and to uh, release this uh, insulin and glucagon pathway. In the liver, and uh, the liver would make use of lipid metabolism, producing more lipoprotein. Lipoprotein would descend into the apicles. So, this is a normal controlled uh, situation. But in the pancreas, there are insulin and glucagon uh, uh, hormones. And you go back to video one. So insulin is to facilitate uh, glucose uptake, and glucagon is to facilitate the production of glucose. So what does it do in uh, in the brain? Okay, that brain from glucose, and then this uh, TG, triacylglycerol, we form these uh, uh, kind of white cones, you know, in the, in the blood and then uh, to finish all this we still don't know much about what's happening here 
In conclusion, uh, metabolic diseases, including obesity, are caused by genetic and environmental factors in a modern society. Concluding all these three videos, we see that the city lifestyle enhanced the pathogenesis of metabolic diseases. Major killers are those metabolic problems affecting kidney, eyes, heart, cardiovascular system. The easiest treatment is regular exercise and low sugar or low fat diet. In other words, more healthy diet becomes more important. With that, uh, we finish all the free videos on uh, hormonal control of uh, sugar metabolism and fat metabolism. And don't forget that you're required to do the uh, assignment or the exercise. Uh, one of the questions is relating to this uh, topic. Bye-bye.